Hi, I'm Gary Neighbors, and I'm here at the East Coast Hot Wheels Museum in Maryland. And today we're going to talk about the 16 original Hot Wheels cars from 1968, known as the Sweet 16. When Hot Wheels debuted in 1968, they were instantly popular with kids, and lots of adults too. We're going to take a look back at the launch of Hot Wheels and focus on what collectors today look for and value in these classic toy cars. I've been collecting old Hot Wheels cars for 25 years, and I can tell you that the values for some of these little toy cars have really gone through the roof. Would you pay over $5,000 for a single Hot Wheels car? Lots of people do. I've got some great examples of each of the original cars here, and we'll go through them one by one. In 1968, Mattel released Hot Wheels to compete with the Matchbox brand, which dominated the toy car market at the time. The Hot Wheels advantage was that the cars rolled amazingly fast, and they looked cooler than Matchbox cars. They had iridescent paint jobs, marketed as Spectraflame paint. They had blown engines and chrome mag wheels with red stripes on the tires, otherwise known as red lines. And they were irresistible to kids. Here are the 16 different cars released in 1968. Nine of them were hot rod versions of cars being produced at the time by the big auto manufacturers like Chrysler, Ford, GM, and Volkswagen. Five were based on exotic full-sized show cars. One was a purpose-built race car for the track. And the last one was a scale model of Hot Wheels designer Harry Bradley's own customized 1964 El Camino. After demoing Hot Wheels for retailers, Mattel received order estimates that far exceeded their own expectations. In response, the company repurposed some space in a plant they owned in Hong Kong to supplement manufacturing. At the time, that plant was primarily making clothes for Barbie dolls. U.S. manufacturing of Hot Wheels would be based in Hawthorne, California, and so both plants geared up to meet the demand for over 50 million cars in their first year. All 16 cars were produced both in the U.S. and in Hong Kong, and for collectors, there are some significant differences between cars made in the two countries. Most notably, cars made in Hong Kong have blue tinted glass. They have four rectangular holes in the base, and they have a black plastic steering wheel that's a separate piece from the interior. The Hong Kong made cars will also have the words Hong Kong somewhere on the base. Cars made in the U.S. have clear windshield glass, they have a solid base without the four rectangular holes, and they have a steering wheel molded with the rest of the interior. Many things about the cars evolved through their production in 1968. The bases, interiors, and paint schemes changed, and even the body castings changed for some of the cars. The style of the wheels even changed, too. In the U.S. factory, the first wheels had a bright chrome look, which evolved into a muted chrome finish. The bright chrome wheels are shown here on this red car. In Hong Kong, the first wheel type used was the deep dish wheel, which was concave and very realistic looking. Deep dish wheels were phased out after only a few months, but collectors love them and look for cars that have them. Many collectors look for cars that have features from earlier in production in 1968. And one way you can spot early run cars from either plant is to look for the TM symbol after the word Hot Wheels on the base. This changed to the registered trademark symbol after Mattel received their approval from the patent office. The package design also added to the appeal of Hot Wheels. The die cut shape and package art designed by Otto Cuny, was a colorful and cool design that fit perfectly with the style of the cars. At the time, Matchbox cars were still being packaged in little yellow boxes with drawings of the cars on them, 
So the new Hot Wheels blister pack really blew kids away. The packages even evolved during 1968, just like many of the cars themselves. The earliest blister packs from the US listed all 16 new models on the back. However, the very first cards listed a model called the Cheetah that was renamed the Python because there was already another real race car called the Cheetah. So there are packages from 1968 which list the Cheetah on the back and packages that list the Python as one of the models. Collectors will pay a premium for a package that lists the Cheetah on the back. There are also a few cars that were released in 1969 that interestingly were packaged on the Cheetah cards like this split in image. The first packages from the Hong Kong plant had only 10 cars listed on the back and not all 16. Collectors think these were stored away for a while after Mattel decided to release 16 cars instead of 10. However, these 10 car cards were later used in 1968 anyway. The first packages from Hong Kong that listed all 16 cars on the back was a version that listed the Cheetah, which was later replaced by the Python. But really, any 50-year-old Hot Wheels car that survives today in its original blister pack is really quite an awesome thing to hold in your hand, no matter what it is. We'll be talking about the value of many Hot Wheels cars today, and those values will be based on the value of loose cars. Cars still in their original packages sell for way more than loose cars do. The array of colorful paint jobs on Hot Wheels cars is really striking, but in fact, Mattel originally intended to release each car in only two different colors, but they eventually used as many as 19 different paint colors for some cars. And most cars come with about three to four different interior colors, with white being preferable to collectors. There are some unique paint colors as well, including the colors used on some cars in the original 1968 retail store display, and a few of these store displays still survive with the cars intact. For collectors, the total amount of different cars from 1968, considering variations in body color, country of manufacture, and other major variations, is over 440 different cars. And if you include different interior colors or base variations, the total is about 1,500 different cars, and that's only for cars released in 1968. So there's pretty much always something for Hot Wheels fans to hunt for. So let's take a look at the cars. First up, let's talk about the Beatnik Bandit. It was based on the custom show car designed and built by Ed Big Daddy Roth in 1961. The Beatnik Bandit was a well-known car by 1968, owing to its appearance on magazine covers like this one at car shows and as a plastic model kit by Ravel, released in 1963. As you can see, the car was originally painted in white with orange stripe detailing. The Beatnik Bandit is usually on display at the National Automobile Museum in Reno, Nevada. Right now it's at the National Corvette Museum in Bowling Green, Kentucky. And if you don't know much about Big Daddy Roth, you should really check out the other cars he built. He was also a really colorful character as well. And check out ratfink.com for more information on Ed's life and his creations. Well, we've got a few Beatnik Bandits here to look at, so let's give them a walk through. The original colors that Mattel intended to paint the car in were aqua and lime, but they ended up releasing this car in about 18 different colors. In terms of differences between Beatnik Bandits made in Hong Kong versus in the US, the Hong Kong car has a round black steering wheel, round headlights stick through holes under the grill, and it has a grill that sticks through the body. The US car has a steering rod instead of a steering wheel, like the real Beatnik Bandit does, and it has flat headlights inside holes under the fender. Besides the standard differences between all US and Hong Kong made cars, there aren't many major variations of this car that drive value, except for the body paint color. By far, the most valuable Beatnik Bandit is the US model in hot pink. In fact, the Hot Pink Bandit is one of the big four cars from 1968, all of which have sold for at least once for $10,000 or more. There's at least one of them today that's still in an unopened blister pack. Collectors love 
any car that came in the glowing hot pink color, which was actually a color that Mattel started using in 1969, perhaps in an effort to attract more girls to Hot Wheels. Only seven of the 16 cars from 1968 were made in this color. Second to the hot pink would be the U.S. yellow version, valued at about $2,000. But for the most part, the Bandit is one of the least valuable cars of the Sweet 16. Common colors in mint condition will run you about $75, and in played with condition, only about $30 to $40. Okay, we're off on our journey through Hot Wheels history, and let's take on number two, the Custom Barracuda. Next on our list is the Custom Barracuda. This Hot Wheels Barracuda was based on the 1967 Plymouth Barracuda Fastback. The Barracuda had a new body style and was the second generation Barracuda made by Plymouth. The body style was made from 1967 to 1969. When Plymouth first decided on a Fastback version of the Valiant, which the Barracuda was derived from, upper management at the company wanted to call it the Panda. That's a true story, folks. So if they hadn't changed their minds, the Hot Wheels car would be called the Custom Panda. So a bit of relief that that didn't happen. All right, as they say, it's Mopar or no car, so let's go. The original colors for the Hot Wheels version of the car were aqua and purple, which Mattel originally called lavender. Later, they called purple purple, thankfully. The main difference in the body between the Hong Kong and the US made car is that the Hong Kong car has longer hood scoops than the US made car. In terms of interesting variations on the Barracuda, the earliest Barracudas made in Hong Kong came with a feature collectors call deep hood scoops. In these cars, the impression from the hood scoop can be seen on the underside of the hood. These are very rare and only came on cars painted in purple or aqua. Barracudas are also one of the cars that come in a so-called hybrid configuration, where the car consists of parts from both the U.S. and the Hong Kong plants. Many of these have a U.S. body, a U.S. interior, and a U.S. windshield, but they have a Hong Kong base. These hybrids have been found in about eight different body colors. And it's thought that these cars were made because of a shortage in parts from one or the other plant during manufacturing, which led Mattel to have to swap parts between plants in order to meet production demands. Originally, Hot Wheels were to be made with interior colors that matched the body color, but that feature was quickly abandoned due to the complexity of that practice as manufacturing ramped up. On the Hong Kong Barracuda, the purple car was initially released with a light purple interior. A purple Barracuda with a purple interior is fairly common, but these light purple interiors also made it into some other Barracudas. More rare is the copper colored car with a purple interior, and the rarest of all of these is the Aqua Barracuda with purple interior, and only a few of these have been found, and they're very valuable. The Barracuda was revisited in 1970 as part of the Spoiler series as the King Cuda. The King Cuda has the identical body as the custom Barracuda, but with the hood removed, a blown engine added, and spoilers added to the front and rear. The base of the King Cuda is derived from the U.S. custom Barracuda base. In terms of values, the most valuable Barracudas are in olive color. There are only a handful of these known. The US made Olive Barracuda is the rarest and is valued at about $7,000. And the Hong Kong made Olive car commands a very high price too at about $2,000. Next would be the creamy pink or orange Barracuda made in Hong Kong, which is worth about $1,000 to $1,500. And of all the cars with the purple interior, the purple car with purple interior will go for about $300. The copper with purple interior about $400 and an aqua with purple interior likely over $2,000. And a common color Barracuda in nice shape will probably run you about $200 as these cars are pretty popular with collectors. 
So next, we're going to tackle the king of the Sweet 16, so let's buckle up. Next up is the Custom Camaro, which is based on a 1967 Camaro two-door sports coupe. At the time of its introduction, Chevy was looking for a car to compete with the highly successful Ford Mustang, and Chevy's own rear-engine Corvair was just not doing the job. When the Camaro was released, it was offered with no less than seven different engine options, two body styles, a coupe and convertible, and four trim levels, the Standard, the Super Sport, the Rally Sport, and the Z28. The car did well, selling about 221,000 units in 1967 compared to the 27,000 Corvairs that sold that same year. And after a few years, sales of the Camaro were on par with those of the Mustang. The Camaro is easily the most intensely collected of all Hot Wheels cars ever produced. Also, no other redline Hot Wheels car has more variations to collect than the custom Camaro, kind of like the real 1967 Camaro. There's a seemingly endless number of combinations of bases, interior colors, and paint schemes to keep Camaro collectors constantly on the hunt for something they don't have. The original colors for the Camaro were lime or blue with a black roof. The main difference between the Hong Kong and the US Camaros is that all Hong Kong Camaros have door outlines on the sides, whereas the US cars don't have this detail. In terms of interesting variations, the very first Camaros made in Hong Kong were issued with interior colors that matched the body color. The lime car came with a dark olive interior, and the blue came with a light blue interior. Interiors like olive also made it into cars with other body colors as well. And these oddball combinations drive value in the collector world. Here's a copper colored Camaro with the olive green interior that was originally made for the lime colored car. Another early run feature of the Camaro is having body color paint on the rear fascia. Collectors call this a painted tail. Later, the rear panel was painted flat black. The painted tail cars command a premium price. The very first commercially released Camaro in the United States is referred to as the kidney bean Camaro. Owing to the kidney bean shaped holes in the base, the kidney bean Camaros have blue glass, so technically these are hybrids because the blue glass came from Hong Kong. The base changed shortly after these were made to what collectors call a tabbed base. These Camaros have a raised line of metal next to each wheel and are found only in red, blue, and lime with the black roof. Like some Barracudas, the Camaro is also found as a hybrid of US and Hong Kong parts. Cars with a U.S. body and a Hong Kong base or Hong Kong blue glass exist, and there's a premium on these. Like this green custom Camaro that's a U.S. car with blue glass. In 1970, the body of the custom Camaro was modified to make a new model called the Heavy Chevy. The Heavy Chevy was made from a retooled Hong Kong custom Camaro body and the U.S. base. And in another act of part swapping by Mattel, some later production custom Camaros are found with the glass and interior intended for the heavy Chevy. The US Camaro was next released in 1983 as the 67 Camaro. Since that time, there have been a ton of re-releases of this casting, which is still made today. The most famous Camaro listed in the guidebooks was actually not intended for retail sale. It's a US car painted with white enamel paint. These were factory paint test cars that were actually pre-production cars that escaped the plant. There were other cars painted in white enamel during this period, like the Barracuda, but the Camaro is the most well-known. Only one of these has been found in an original blister pack. A nice loose one might cost you as much as $6,000. For regular retail cars, the dark brown, or chocolate brown, Camaro is one of the most valuable. One still in the blister pack is sold for $15,000. The Hong Kong creamy pink Camaro is on par with the US dark brown, and these two rarities are members two and three 
in the Big Four of 1968, having sold for up to $10,000 for a loose car. But the average sale price for either of these cars hovers around $5,000. There are also some very rare Hong Kong Camaros in aqua, orange, and purple with a black roof, and these will run about two to three thousand dollars. Given the demand for original Hot Wheels Camaros, even in common colors, these cars regularly sell for about four hundred dollars and up, making them one of the most expensive castings. So that's the custom Camaro, a car that everybody wants in their vintage Hot Wheels collection. You could spend the rest of your life collecting Camaros and you'd probably never be bored, but you might have to pace yourself a bit because these old Hot Wheels Camaros can really set you back quite a chunk of change. Next up, we'll stick with another Chevy product and we'll hit the custom Corvette. Number four on our list is the Custom Corvette, and there's a good story about this one. In 1967, Chevy was designing the new 68 Corvette with a radical body style, and the design was confidential. The C2 Corvette, made from 1963 to 1967, was being retired for the new C3 design. Mattel wrote to the GM Styling Center to request plans for the 68 Corvette in order to make the Hot Wheels car, but that request was denied. Because Harry Bradley worked for GM shortly before moving to Mattel, he was familiar with the plans for the new C3 Corvette, and he was able to use that knowledge to design the Hot Wheels model during 1967. But some say that Harry drove from California to Detroit and stole a copy of the plans for the new Corvette from GM in order to design the Hot Wheels version. But I'm not sure that story's ever been confirmed. But regardless, when the first 16 Hot Wheels cars debuted in the summer of 68, the Hot Wheels Custom Corvette was released before the actual 1968 Chevrolet Corvette, which shook up the car world a bit. So let's look at the Hot Wheels Custom Corvette. As far as differences between the Hong Kong and the US Corvettes, the Hong Kong Corvettes have a longer hood and the rear end is part of the body. U.S. Corvettes have a smaller hood and the rear end is actually part of the base. There aren't many interesting variations on the Corvette uh, besides the body color, uh, but one is the Hong Kong later run long steering wheel interior variation. These cars from Hong Kong came with a steering wheel which matched the interior color of the car, unlike the cars that came with the standard black plastic steering wheel and people will pay a premium for these long steering wheel cars, especially when the car has a white interior. The C3 Corvette was next made as a Hot Wheels car in 1976, released as the Corvette Stingray. This was a much larger proportion car, which has been released many times over the years since red lines disappeared. In terms of value, the top Corvette is the Hong Kong car in creamy pink valued at $2,000 to $3,000. A light blue Corvette is valued at about $1,500. The U.S. Brown Corvette is also valued at about $1,500. These tend not to be the dark chocolate brown, but usually a lighter brown. And common colors on the Corvette will fetch about $100 to $150. Well, thanks for joining me today for a look at the original Hot Wheels cars from 1968 We've made it through four of the 16 cars, and in the next episode, we'll take a look at four more of these classics, including the real car that inspired the iconic look of Hot Wheels. I'm Gary Neighbors, and I'll see you next time on Sweet 16, the original Hot Wheels cars of 1968.